I know that I was wondering what that was from, so I figured out <laughs> like Friday Sunday I went back and issued it. Yeah. Coach Rand says he's expecting you to play on Saturday. I assume you expect the same thing. Right? Yeah, I mean we're gonna be smart, uh, moving forward. Uh, just going protocol, staying, you know, keeping in touch with the doctors and the trainers, medical staff, yeah. so I'm just gonna keep taking it day by day, see how I feel. Maybe play, maybe not, maybe play a little bit. Maybe not, so we'll see. The next step in the protocol is you have to go through a contact practice, is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's gonna, they're gonna send me through a contact practice, then he's gonna hold up his fingers, ask how many he's holding up, and then if I say the wrong answer, he'll be like, well, maybe you should, you know, but no, I'm just. Next one's a contact practice, which, you know, uh, I don't think we're going to finish out the week with any more. We're, gonna, we're starting to clean things up on uh, defensively and offensively, so. But yeah, the next step would be a, a contact practice in the protocol. What is your memory? I remember everything about the play. Um, you know, it, uh, it was not the fact that, you know, it was just the fact that I knew that something was wrong. Uh, not even the fact that I was, I didn't really care about where I was on the field. I just knew that something was wrong and I was like, you know what, I need to get help. Because um, I was, I remained conscious the entire time. I just, uh, you know, I got got measured on the um, the they called cat, catapult. Uh, I don't know. It's like a ticker thing that measures your gravitational force and how many yards you ran and all this stuff. And it measured a pretty high impact. So you know, I just, I mean, it was a really high impact. It was like it measured uh, like almost 16 g g force, gravitational force, which you can look at. Like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I guess they said that like fighter pilots pass out around 13, and then mine was pretty, mine was pretty high. So yeah, it was more like I just need, I just knew that I needed some help, and uh, I didn't really, you know, once I, I kind of came back with it, um, not came back with it, but was fully alert and aware um, as I was running off to the sideline, and I was kind of like, yeah, you know, I, you know, I just trust the medical staff that they take care of me. So. Is that pretty scary? You throw out a number like that, you say, fighter pilots pass out. Because the hit, maybe if you watch a replay or you hear those numbers, is that scary at all to you? I mean, not really. Uh, if you think about it, you know, I hit him, so that was that's pretty. I wear it almost like a badge of honor, but the fact that, you know, what happened and how I hit him, I need to definitely correct that because basically all that was implemented on a, you know, I kind of got my neck jerked and I feel like that's what really caused the problem. Um, so that's on me, really. That's I have to correct that as a player to be smarter about how I hit. Um, you know, it wasn't the it wasn't the impact, it wasn't the, it was just me as a player and I need to correct the way I hit. You know, I can't be just diving in with my head. You know, that's dangerous obviously. But um, I need to be smarter about that. Mike, is it as simple for you as if the medical staff says, okay, you're cleared to go, that you're going to go, or do you say, you know what, maybe I want to take a week off? I base it on really how I feel. Okay. Uh, I definitely trust the medical staff, mm -hmm. and they trust me. So they say they're, they're definitely, they, you know, when they clear me, or, you know, in the past, mm -hmm. with any re-injury, mm -hmm. They say, well, you're clear to go if you feel okay. okay. If you feel like you can go, you can go. Okay. You know? And that's where the trust is there with the medical the medical staff here. And, you know, I I really wanted to go back. I'm a, you know, I, I like to compete and I didn't want to let the, you know, the guys down on the team and all that stuff. And, you know, I kind of had the moment, get the best of me at the time, and I wanted to go back in the game. Um, but deep down, as soon as I kind of let that frustration kind of, you know, pass over after the immediate, you know, like, yeah, you're probably not going to return in this game, we're going to pull you. Uh, after that immediate kind of frustration, I, uh, I kind of, you know, got my, kind of realized that, yeah, it's probably wise that I'll go back in this game. And that's, you know, that's why I really trust and get along with the medical staff here, because they're always in for my best interest. So and it definitely was a good, a good decision to pull me. If you've seen the video, you would understand. What's your gut feeling right now? Sometimes it's up to how you feel. Yeah. Um, 
so right now, uh, I feel good. Uh, I'm gonna go just continue to go through the concussion protocol. Uh, right now, I feel really good. And you know, as of now, I think that uh, I'll suit up, definitely suit up. But uh, like I said, I'm gonna communicate with the doctors. If uh, they think it's wise for me to go based on test scores and based on, you know, I fill out, you know, basically these charts on how I feel. Um, they think it's wise for me to go and they give me the green light. You know, I'll shoot up and I'll, I'll uh, get in for a couple plays or get in for the game or whatever. Well, I mean, now I guess, not, I mean, I've read a lot, I've done a lot of research, I've done a lot of personal research, you know, it depends on what you mean by confession. Like, there's so many people have definitions. Like, you know, there are some people who say concussions are, you know, if you lose, you know, any sort of, you know, vision, you know, if you get a ring in your head, it doesn't have to be loss of consciousness. It, it could be something simple. It could be something. And then there's some people who are more on the, you know, the hard-nosed side, I would, you know, don't want to say. Or like, yeah, you have to lose consciousness for like, you know, three seconds, you know, now, like out cold. But, so, I mean, you know, it depends on what you mean by, by concussion. There's a lot of people with a lot of different definitions. You know, I mean, I have two diagnosed, um, and they haven't happened, you know, back to back at all. They have been completely separate, you know. So, I feel like I fully recovered from them because of the way I, because of the, you know, the high, the high tech stuff we had. Of Wisconsin and the approach to it, the protocol after and all that stuff. So it's um, so the two diagnoses. Of, I only think, yeah. I mean, I've approached them you know, with caution, and I'm fine. Is this number three? Uh, so that's the thing. Like they don't even know what to call this one because you know I, I really experienced the experience. The extent, the symptoms that I experienced were not of the standard of what you know. Let's just say. Um, our medical bull will call it a concussion, you know, so uh, I'm just, like I said, I'm just going through the concussion protocol just to make sure. For sure. How close would you say, or how close have you followed the Chris Borland story? A little bit, not not too much. I mean, I, I, Chris is one of my buddies. I talk to him quite often, but I don't really, uh, I mean, I kind of have, you know, oh, sorry, I kind of, yeah, and I follow a little bit, I guess. He didn't reach out to you at all, did he, after that? He, he did not. You, Mike, you said that the symptoms you have experienced aren't even what they would normally anticipate after concussion. Can you share what some of the symptoms were, other than being upset, but you couldn't play? Well, most, yeah, most definitions of a concussion, yeah. uh, they say, like, you know, you have to have, uh, I mean, there's a long list. Yeah. There's about 50 things. If you have like any sort of number of them, they mm -hmm. say you may have a concussion. Okay. Um, but you know, to, I mean, there would be like you know sensitivity to light, sensitivity to noise. Headache. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's a big one. Headache, uh, like nausea, weakness, fatigue, okay. feeling blue. You know, there's a bunch of them. I'm not saying I've, I, I'm not saying I had any of those, but I'm just saying that uh, those are there's a long list. You know, and you. You have to be true on how you mark them, and mm -hmm. you know they'll get the right diagnosis for, for that. But I mean, the true, yeah. I mean, I think a true look inside with like a CT scan would definitely be the ultimate thing. But it ultimately, is how you feel. Okay. You know, that's that's one of the main things it told me. So, what was your main symptom from the hip? Um, you mentioned it was your neck more than anything. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. So I was just concerned more of the fact that you know I knew that something was wrong, mm -hmm. and uh, there was more of like a, a, a you know that I just knew that something was wrong. I took a big hit. You know, I was alert to the problem, and I was like, okay, you know, it's you know this is this is an issue. I need to get checked out. You know, it was just more like a I don't know, like a body thing. It was more like that was a big hit. You should probably get checked out. Now, even though you couldn't do anything on the field, you could give help off the field. How did you talk about that discussions you had with Dakota and what you saw out of his performance? Yeah, no, I thought the, the I thought the DBs and the, the defense in general played really well for having that be the game it was. You know, Alabama was a great team. You know, we played. I thought we played them really well. You know, there's a lot of things we could have worked on. Um, and I thought they, I thought Dakota did a really nice job of, uh, you know, being the next man in sort of mentality. And I've always preached that to him. Uh, 
was going through camp, you know, I was always like, hey man, like, just think, like, if someone goes down, like, you're number two, it doesn't mean you can, like, slack off, take any plays off, you have to know what's going on the entire time, so, you know, and then the case came up where I went down, the coach stepped in, he did a nice job, just trying to coach him and keep him calm the entire time, so he does, you know, he first really game starting, you know, at his position, so I was really trying to, uh, just coach him through that, just be there for him as, like, a mentor, and just to, you know, just to be there for him, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody thinks that, you know, but that's just me being, you know, I was like, uh, you know, I, me being a player I am, I really wanted to be in there, but I just knew it wasn't wise to be in there. I mean, I just, I really wanted to go make that play. I really, you know what I'm saying? I just, me being, you know, that's just how I was thinking, but, you know, I knew the guys could, uh, could handle it, but um, some of the big plays, I was just like, you know, more like an encouragement. Like, come on, guys, like, you got to make sure you watch out for that. You know, don't let them do it again. You know, learn from the mistakes. Thank you. Thank you.